Physiology, just like every other medical course you would get to study in medical school, is not a course you can master just by reading a few selected topics or chapters in the curriculum. It's always best to study all of the topics in the curriculum. That way, you would be on the safe side in the exam and pass the exam with excellent grades and without so much struggle. However, if you are pressed for time and have got a limited number of days or weeks to study for an important exam, such as the 300 level MBBS Men Professional Exam, then being strategic about how you approach the course and knowing what topics often come up in the exam will most certainly increase your chances of success in the exam. Now, you can never be so sure what the questions for the exam are going to be, so it is important for you to have a thorough knowledge of many of the topics in the curriculum. If you are unable to familiarize yourself with all of the topics before the exam, there are certain important and high topics you must know because of their tendency to come up repeatedly in the MBBS professional exams. Before moving on with this video, I would like to state that the information provided in this video is based on my personal opinion, experience, and results from my researches using various past questions from different medical colleges within the country and beyond. Hello there, this is MedZone TV, home to medical school excellence. MedZone TV is an online medical community that presents you with series of web-packed activities ranging from captivating stories, top-notch medical contents, fascinating videos, quizzes, monthly challenges, and a lot more you can't afford to miss. In today's video, we'll be discussing the 15 most commonly repeated topics in human physiology exams, providing you with a solid foundation that will help you excel in your exams. Please sit back, relax, and listen. The very first topic every medical student needs to be familiar with, especially those preparing to write a professional exam in physiology, is homeostasis. This particular topic is the basis and the very foundation of human physiology. It lets you understand how the body maintains stable internal conditions in the face of changing external parameters. For example, if a person suffers an injury to the arm and was bleeding profusely, such a person could bleed out and die if there were no homeostatic mechanisms in place to arrest the bleeding or compensate for the amount of blood being lost. In the exams, you can have questions from concepts like negative and positive feedback mechanisms, key homeostatic control systems, and questions on some examples of homeostasis, which include things like maintaining a constant body temperature, or keeping blood sugar levels within normal range, or even regulating the pH of body fluids. Next up, we have regulation of arterial blood pressure. This topic is so popular in the exams and can be said to be the second most commonly repeated topic in physiology MB exam. You would commonly find it in at least one out of every three to four MB pass question you pick to study with. To answer a question in arterial regulation of blood pressure, you would need to provide an explanation of the mechanism and factors involved in maintaining blood pressure within a normal range. You would need to mention the factors influencing blood pressure such as cardiac output and peripheral resistance, the role of baroreceptor reflex, the autonomic nervous system and the renin angiotensin aldosterone system VARS for short in the regulation of blood pressure. You would also need to mention other hormonal influences such as adrenaline, no adrenaline and atranatriatic peptide and their role in arterial blood pressure regulation. Another high yield and very important topic that is commonly repeated in most physiology exams is transport across the cell membrane. Transport across the cell membrane typically refers to the movement of substances such as ions, molecules, and proteins into and out of the cell. To do well in this topic, you would need to understand the different transport mechanisms involved in the transport of substances across the cell membrane. That is, you need to understand both active and passive transport mechanisms. You need to understand how primary active transport differs from secondary active transport, how the sodium potassium ATPase pump works in primary active transport, the different transport mechanisms that fall under passive transport, and some examples of substances that can diffuse through the lipid bilayer by simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion. Another popular topic where possible exam questions can come from is neuromuscular transmission and excitation contraction coupling. It's important that you have clear understanding of the processes involved in muscle contraction before sitting for a professional exam in physiology. Familiarize yourself with the relationship between neuromuscular transmission and excitation contraction coupling. Understand that neuromuscular transmission refers to the communication between the motor neuron and the muscle fiber, while excitation contraction coupling refers to the series of events 
that lead to a muscle fiber contracting in response to a nerve stimulus. Ensure you learn the steps involved in neuromuscular transmission as well as the steps involved in excitation contraction coupling as it will surely help you in the exams. Another important and high topic where exam questions repeatedly come from is electrocardiogram. This topic is quite popular in the exams because of its importance in assessing cardiac electric activity and detecting abnormalities in the heart rate, reading, and conduction. Familiarizing yourself with the various components of a standard ECG recording and the different types of ECG leads will surely help you ace your exams as these are the common questions that can be asked in the exams. Other important topics in cardiovascular physiology that can be asked in the exams include things like cardiac output, heart sounds, and the cardiac cycle. Next up, we have urine concentration and dilution. This topic is another popular topic where possible exam questions repeatedly come from. The examiners usually like to paint a clinical scenario with questions from this topic. They may create a scenario of a person who is stranded on the desert and ask you what changes you would expect in the urine of the individual. If the question is on urine concentration, always start by explaining the importance of urine concentration in maintaining body fluid balance and then move on to discuss the physiological mechanisms involved in concentrating urine, such as the countercurrent multiplier system and the role of ADH in urine concentration. If the question is on urine dilution, start by explaining the importance of urine dilution in maintaining body fluid balance and then describe the countercurrent exchange system. When approaching either questions, Always emphasize that urine concentration and dilution are tightly regulated processes that involve the countercurrent multiplier and exchange systems, as well as hormonal control through ADH and other regulatory mechanisms. Another set of important topics that usually come out in the exams are visual and auditory pathways. Both pathways act as routes through which visual and auditory information from the eyes and ears are transmitted to the brain for processing. Understanding these pathways will help you comprehend how visual and auditory information is transmitted, processed, and integrated in the brain. Always make sure you are well versed in both topics before the exam, as there are common sensory pathways that come out in physiology MB exams. Another important and high yield topic where possible exam questions can come from is hematopoiesis, that is, the process of blood formation. It is important to note that hematopoiesis is the formation of all blood cells, including red blood cells white blood cells, and platelets. You can have questions from any of these different lineages of blood cells, but the red blood cell lineage is the most commonly asked. Other examples of blood-related questions that are frequently asked in physiology exams include anemia, hemolytic disease of the newborn, ABU blood group and versus incompatibility, and hemostasis. The next important and high yield topic you need to know is hypothalamic and pituitary hormones. Key areas to focus on include the hypothalamic releasing and inhibitory hormones that control secretion of the anterior pituitary gland, cells and hormones produced by the anterior pituitary gland and their physiological function, the posterior pituitary gland and its relation to the hypothalamus. Focusing on these areas will surely help you ace your exams. Moving on, another frequently repeated topic that commonly shows up in the exam is measure cycle. When approaching a question on the measure cycle, it's important to provide a comprehensive and accurate explanation. Start by giving a brief overview of the measure cycle. Mention that it is a natural process that occurs in females of reproductive age and explain that the measure cycle consists of several phases. Discuss the hormonal changes that occur during the measure cycle. Mention that the length of the measure cycle can vary among individuals with an average duration of around 28 days and conclude by mentioning at least one or two clinical coordinates. Another very important topic where questions tend to come from is physiological changes in pregnancy. As you know, pregnancy is a unique physiological process in which a woman's body undergoes numerous changes to support the growth and development of the fetus. Now, because these changes occur in various systems of the body, it's usually best to approach these questions system by system so you don't miss some of the key physiological changes that takes place during pregnancy. You must mention the changes that occur in the reproductive system, the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the gastrointestinal system, as well as every other system that experiences a significant change during the period of pregnancy. You must also state that these physiological changes occur gradually throughout the course of pregnancy and that they are essential for supporting the health and development of both the mother 
and the fetus. Another frequently repeated topic that commonly shows up in physiology exams is the physiology of sleep. Questions from this topic is quite common and requires you to have a comprehensive understanding of the different stages of sleep, the physiological changes that can occur during sleep, and the factors that regulate the sleep-wake cycle. Understanding the detailed physiology of sleep, as well as the various sleep disorders that can disrupt this normal physiology, will serve you well in your exams. Moving on, another important and high yield topic that you need to know before the exams is the general principles of gastrointestinal function. This particular topic focuses on the key processes involved in the digestion and absorption of food substances, as well as the elimination of waste. Focus on understanding the structure and function of the gastrointestinal tract, the role of the liver, pancreas, and small intestine in the breakdown and absorption of nutrients, and the regulatory mechanisms that control gastrointestinal motility and secretions. Another very important and high topic that you must pay attention to is the regulation of respiration or breathing. This topic together with transport of respiratory gases are common areas in respiratory physiology where exam questions can be drawn up from. Less common areas are non-respiratory functions of the lungs and mechanics of breathing. Understanding these topics well before the exam will certainly increase your chances of success in the exam. Next up, we have common physiological reflexes such as deglutition, vomiting, micturition, and defecation reflexes. I decided to group all of these various reflexes together and talk about all of them here because they are oftentimes asked together in the exams. The format in the exam is usually in the form of write a short note on the following reflexes and then the reflexes will be listed below. Try to familiarize yourself with these very common physiological reflexes as they tend to come out very frequently in physiology MB exams. So there you have it everyone. Those are the 15 most commonly repeated topics in human physiology exams. Let us know what you think about this video in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching and staying with us to the end of the video. We hope you found this video helpful and we wish you the best of luck in your exams. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave any questions you may have in the comments below.